My name is Liddell Steiner. I'm here at Tillmore, and today I'm going to be doing a little introduction into how to assemble the finger weeder and A blade setup on our 520 tractor. This setup can be used for any multiple of rows, really on any tractor that you have uh, that you want to add some precision cultivation to. So in the video, I'm going to be showing some tips and tricks, also going over the different items that we have here, because as you can see, there's a lot of different components that make up this kit. Uh, and so we thought it would be just a good idea to be able to introduce you both to the component pieces and also how we can put them together on the uh, toolbar. So as we move into the, the conversation, I want just to kind of talk to you about some of the different names that we have. Okay? So here we have, this is what we call the um, trailing arm mount. We have two trailing arm mounts on our website. This is for the two inch toolbar. It's a smaller system that can go onto a two inch toolbar and then a tube can come out as I'll show you uh, to give you different flexibility. And this is what the finger wheels we mounted onto. Uh, here we have so what we call mod bars. Uh, they're just basically a two inch tube and they have uh, holes cut in that allow us to index uh, and measure different things later on. These are our cross clamps and these cross clamps allow us to make a T with our two inch tubes. Uh, these are our flex mounts. Uh, they're like an S-tine, but allow us to put a finger weeder or an A-blade up in and slide that shank uh, vertically through. Over here we have our A-blades. Uh, we have sizes from 4 to 10 inches, allow us to give us a really nice shallow uh, but good cultivation. And then over here we've got our finger weeders. Uh, and in this case today we're going to be doing a uh, setup for two rows at 30 inch, and so we have four uh, finger weeders. So that's just a quick overview of the different tools uh, and uh, the, 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 the implements that we're going to be putting together. We did a pre-assembly on most of the items, um, but what I'm going to start working with here is we're going to go through, we're going to first mount the um, uh, trailing arm mounts, uh, and we're going to center those on the 30-inch row spacing. So we're going to start off with a tape measure. Uh, and a Sharpie and just make sure we know where we're going to put things first on the toolbar. So here we are down at the toolbar. Uh, the Tillmore toolbar has uh, a, a ruler that's built into the toolbar uh, so you can grab your different measurements. We're going to be setting this up for two rows at 30 inches. So I'm going to run over to 12. I'm going to half a 30 is 15. So 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm going to put a mark right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. 12, 13, 14, 15. And then I'm going to just double check. Uh, with a tape measure, uh, 30 inches, very good. Okay, so that's where we're going to center our, uh, our trailing mounts, which is going to hold the finger weeders. So as you can imagine, we're going to put the finger weeders over the row. Uh, this trailing arm mount is a pretty unique setup where it allows us to be able to index uh, the uh, mod bars into it so it keeps it from pulling back out. Uh, and then uh, it also has some spring that allows us to give different tension, more and less tension, uh, depending on how much we want to have there. So this is kind of a, a unique little piece that will give us some good foundation for the finger weeders. All right, uh, so to mount this, we're going to, again, we're going to put this on center, and we're going to set up the U-bolts and the 916 uh, Nine, uh, nine use a 9 sixteenths wrench here uh, to add these serrated flange nuts on. Okay. Now one of the things you're going to notice about our Tillmore toolbar um, and that it's a little bit difficult if you don't have one of our setups is we do not have any welding. I'm going to move this over so you can see on this face. Okay. That's important. Uh, because when you're trying to set tools up on this, uh, on this side, if you had to have this welded around, it would make it much more difficult to center things up where you need. Okay? So as we put this back in here, we're going to center right up uh, that, and there we go. Okay, so I've tightened up the four nuts to hold those U-bolts on. In this situation with doing two rows at 30 inches, I'm going to tighten them all the way down because I know I'm not going to have any issues with spacing. If you have some tighter row spacing, you may want to just leave them loose or slightly tight just to make sure everything uh, is positioned where you want it. Well, next, we're going to take the uh, mod bar, uh, and we have a couple different lengths of mod bars. We're going to put the longer one on here. 
And this longer one's going to go in, just going to slide right in here. And uh, where there's a hole, that's going to slide in, it's going to index into uh, that cap head screws I talked about earlier. So you see I just do this and it slides right in. Now I, I can't pull back, it, it's, it's holding in. And then all we need to do is add our last U-bolt in from the bottom just simply to uh, hold it tight against, okay? So the cap head screw itself is doing the work to keep it from pulling back. The U-bolt's just holding everything tight up here. And uh, we have our first uh, mount uh, in and set up, okay? Just tighten those guys down. So there's our first trailing mount uh, with the first mod bar in. I'm going to put the second uh, trailing arm bar on now, and then we're going to jump to putting the A blades with the torsion mounts on, okay? All right, uh, so next we're going to put the A blades on with, with our flex mount. And as you can see here, I already put the first one on just so you can see the positioning with the point forward and the cutaways. Uh, the way we're going to do this is the A blades uh, come in four to uh, 10 inch sizes and you want to get within a, about a couple inches of the row. Uh, and so as we get closer, we're going to be able to move this uh, closer and then set it down finally. I want to point out here uh, that the typically uh, we sell the A blades with a standard flat shank, just a straight shank that's going vertically. But we also have two different ones that gives us a bit more of an offset. So if you're wanting to um, go a little bit more off to an offset to kind of go around an obstacle uh, or even more so, uh, we do have those options available for different shanks. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're building and designing these tools. Um, we can work around some obstacles with their different flat shanks. So as we uh, put the um, flex mount on with the A-blade, uh, the way it's going to work <clears throat> is um, you're going to slide in this clip and that clip is going to then drop that carriage bolt through, and that's going to go around the two-inch bar, okay? So, in, in how we actually do that is typically what I would do is put the clip on first, okay? And then you're going to, just like an S-tine, you're going to go like this, around, and up, and in, okay? So, it's really easy, but if but it's really hard. It's like one of those puzzles sometimes where if, you're not, if you don't know the trick, it can just kind of be a little bit difficult to, to imagine how to get that to all work. So um, we're gonna drop that bolt, that carriage bolt through. Uh, it may just not drop through. Maybe we have to get to go down. Okay, and we're gonna add this uh, nut on the bottom. Okay, and then we're going to bring in this A blade up from the bottom and we're going to tighten this down here. And we're going to tighten this down just like that. Okay. We're gonna just do a kind of a loose tighten just so we can um, have it set. So here we have the A-blade set up now so we can move these laterally and adjust them. Uh, and as we think about that, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna be measuring from the center of our row outward, okay? And so again, uh, we're gonna have, uh, I'm gonna measure, we're gonna have two and a half inches on each side of the row that we're not cultivating. So since the A-blade here is 10 inches wide, half of that is five. We're gonna add five and two and a half. So we're gonna measure over seven and a half inches. So if I go to the center there, measure over seven and a half, that'll get me about right where I need to be. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Center this up at seven and a half. I'm gonna move this over just so so slightly. And that's about where we want things to be, okay? One quick tip. Uh, that's about where we want it. However, if you'll notice down here, the A blades are not centered on the shank. They're over ever just so slightly. And so you might have to make a few minor adjustments to accommodate the side that the A blade is bolted onto that shank. But that should get you pretty close to where you need to be.
Okay, we're gonna continue on with this row. We're gonna bring back our trailing arm and just a reminder about the ability to use these springs as a tensioner uh, in the future. We're gonna add the cross clamp. Uh, the cross clamp has a nice little feature which uses this uh, cap head screw to be able to index in there so that it doesn't pull back. And then you just simply tighten that down uh, with an Allen wrench and a regular wrench. And uh, got that down. Gonna add that in. And then we're going to add our cross member right through here. Okay. One of the things that I like about using these mod bars, you can use any two inch steel that you might have on your farm. That's fine too. You don't have to buy that from us. Uh, but the one nice thing I like about the mod bars is these holes, again, allow you to index, but they also serve as a measuring stick for me. So without even pulling my measuring stick, I know that I've centered this up. Uh, this cross clamp because I'm looking at the two holes and the reference point between them. So we're just going to tighten these guys down and then we'll go on to the next step. So the next step we're going to be doing is going to be assembling the finger weeders. Uh, these are the last and final step to this A blade finger weeder setup. As you can see here, we have a couple already assembled. I'm going to show you a little quick insights into what you need to do. Uh, when you get the finger weeder, it's going to come in three or four different pieces like this. You're going to have the drive plate, which goes in the bottom, the finger, which is in the middle, and uh, this might change color depending on the durometer that you get, and then the hub that gets added on top, and then finally the uh, shank that would get bolted there. Okay. Uh, with each finger weeder, a little pack of bolts and nuts uh, comes with it and some instructions as well. And also a reminder that many of our instructions are found online. Uh, if you lose them or need them, uh, we can get you those. So the first four bolts that we're going to use are these smaller carriage bolts. They're going to get used with the um, carriage head on the top going down through the top. Uh, and we're going to line up all these different holes and jump down to the bottom and then just add one of these nuts. We're going to put all four in and then we're going to tighten them up at the same time. I have tightened up all four bolts uh, with the impact wrench uh, and uh, sometimes the final, I just realized here, the final one, you maybe should just use a regular wrench just to make sure that they're all equally tightened. You, because you also don't want to over tighten them. You want them all to be snug, but not compressing that finger so much that it sandwiches it too tight. Then we're going to add in the shank, uh, and we have two remainder carriage, pairs of carriage bolts. Uh, you're probably wondering why we have two sets. The shorter set is for the flat shank. If you ever get an inch and a half a tube, a mod bar, uh, you're going to need the longer one to go through that. So in this case, we're going to discard those, and we're going to just simply use uh, the two shorter ones, again with the carriage head going through the top, down to the back, and then adding those um, locking nuts on the back side. That wraps up the finger weeders. We're going to take a pair of these now and add them to our trailing arm mount. All right, here we are now going to be adding the finger weeders uh, to the trailing arm mount. We're going to use our basic clamp. This is like a C-clamp and is our most basic one that uses a three-quarter inch wrench just to tighten and push this plate against here, okay? Uh, so it's pretty simple, pretty basic. And just want a, a reminder, these work great for finger weeders where you're, we're able to rotate. Uh, may not typically use with A-blades though. Uh, A-blades, you're going to want something more like a stout uh, flex like this so that if you hit rocks, it'll, it'll be able to pull against. All right, so. Uh, the easiest way I find is to just assemble it like this on the outside and then slide it in. Okay. And once we have it in there, you can tighten it up by hand. And then add in a wrench just to give you the final touch. All right, so the other side we're going to just Similarly, add that in, bring this around, and then tighten this up. Okay, so that's adding on the finger weeders, and I did that pretty quickly. And as you can see there, 
I just got a quick rough adjustment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tune in everything and make sure things are adjusted the way that we want them uh, for getting ready to go to the field. So here we are uh, looking on the back side of this A-blade trailing arm mount. I'm going to add in a little thing here. These clips uh, that also come in are available to add in the top of the uh, flat shanks. Basically what these do is it'll keep the shank, if it would get loose in the field, from completely falling out and losing it in the field. Okay, so you can add those in there. Um, all right, so as we look at the setting the, the, them up, I lowered the toolbar to the ground. I also made sure that the toolbar is pretty much parallel to the ground, okay? So this angle, you don't want this toolbar um, angled too much one angle or the other. You want that top flat part of the toolbar to be parallel with the flat part of the ground. Once we have that, um, and you also notice the toolbar I have is about kind of lift arm height. You don't want it so far down or so far up that everything's at its extreme. But once I have it here, I'm going to just lower the A blades to make sure that they are uh, on the ground flat. Okay, those down there. And then on the back, on the finger weeders, uh, we're going to do two things. Um, we're going to move them out a little bit. I've got a little bit, they were a little bit close. Um, so we're going to just move them out. So you have about an inch or two gap between the fingers. That's probably a good place to start. Um, as you get used to using fingers, uh, you may find that you want to move them in closer eventually. But having um, uh, an inch or so gap between the fingers when they're engaged in soil is, is probably okay. So I'm going to, again, use my indexing out here uh, kind of as a ruler, just, you know, roughly uh, half inch from the end here, half inch from the end there, and then I'm going to tighten them down. Now, in the process, I'm going to lift up as well. So I'm going to make sure that those finger weeders, uh, when they're engaged in the ground, that they... Uh, are not uh, bottoming out, let's say, this up here. So I'm going to lift this up just a little bit. All right, same thing on this side. Okay, so now you can see that I have different tension. And this is in float. So as this goes down, it can drop a little bit further so that everything's in the gauge in the ground at the same point in time. Again, this is just a setting things up in the shop. As we get out into the field, you're going to want to do some more adjustment. This gets you pretty close to where you might want to be. All right, everybody. Well, we wrapped up uh, the A-blade finger reader unit. Uh, we went ahead and just did the second uh, unit. So now we have both in the same form and same fashion. Um, I should note that this system and setup can be used for a variety of row spacings and crops. Uh, this is set up for two rows, 30 inch. We've had people use this also for two rows, 15 or 16 inch row spacing, or using nine inch fingers for a much tighter as well. Uh, additionally, what you'll do is if you're doing a, a tighter row spacing, you're going to offset by having this center piece in here where these finger readers are going to be staggered so they're not hitting each other. Okay? And uh, typically, this is set up and used under the belly of a tractor. So uh, you would add it uh, to a tooling set up under the belly where it gives you a higher precision. And then on the back, you might have some S tines that would do your pathway or even take care of this middle row here. If you have any questions, don't hesitate and give us a call at Tillmore. We're here to help. Uh, you can purchase these items online or we can help you curate whatever you need, uh, just purchasing individual pieces and components or the whole setup as a whole. Again, any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. We're here to help. Thanks.